Hey, I'm Jonathan Long. We're out here keeping the blues alive at sea with Joe Bonamassa. If that's all right with you, I'd like to show you a couple of my favorite licks. All right, so uh, I, uh, I guess as far as blues play, and I kind of look at stuff in three different boxes. Uh, you know, uh, you got your pentatonic, everybody knows. Then I call this what I would call my Albert King box. And then you got, so that would be two frets up. So like if you're in the pentatonic, you go two frets up uh, on the G and B string. And uh, I always tell people uh, when you're on the, when you're on the E and B string, you're playing, uh, if you're in the key of A, which has dots, you're playing outside of the, the dot. So you're playing in the no dot spaces. And then uh, if you're on the, any other string, you're kind of sort of playing in the dots and just feeling it from there. But uh, then when you slide up four frets, you're in the BB box. And then you mix them all together. But, um, <clears throat> so, I like, uh, I like this little lick. It's kind of like a little frilly lick. Uh, you start on the 12th fret on the E string, and you do a pull-off on all four. Uh, so, it'd be 12, 11, 10, 9. Okay? So, you get... So you can get, uh, you can, you do the pull off, you're going to pick a note on the B string on the 10th fret, G string 9th fret, G string 7th fret, and then a slide from 5 to 6 on the G, and then you're picking the uh, B string on the 10th fret. So you get... So that's a pretty sweet lick. Uh, <clears throat> I like to do, I like to use a lot of chords, uh, you know, little tetra, I, I, I learned them uh, the, as the phrase tetra chords. I don't know if that's actually a, a saying that anybody uses, but that's what somebody told me they were called. Uh, so if you're like on, um, you're on the D string and the G string, you, so uh, we're just gonna be in the key of A, uh, just to, uh, so we're all on the same page. Uh, D string, fifth fret, G string, 6th fret, so you get that, and then that would be uh, D string, ninth fret, G string, 7th fret, that's 8th uh, fret, 10th fret, 11th fret, ninth fret, and then hit the B string on the 10th fret, so you get this, uh, you get this, So if you're using it. And then you can do it, you can extend it from to um, like the ninth fret on the E string and the 10th fret on the B string. And then you got, so we're on the E and B string here, nine, 10. And then you got 10, 12, 11, 13, 12, 14, and then I always end with a little two note A here. So you get. So if you're using that. Right? So it gives you kind of like a, it's like a, uh, it's almost gospely. So like if you're doing. You know, it's just kind of like a gospel groove. So, uh, and I like to mix a lot of jazz and gospel. So if you get, so if you're like, you got, and then you got, so that's cool. Two little cool little uh, passes. Um, I do a lot of chicken picking. 
So I just take blues licks like um, like uh, if I was doing, I might pick it. And it's all about just picking up and down. So you got. You know, and uh, you can also, so you got the pull off wheel, you can also pick that. And just follow it down, you know. It's the same little lick. So that should be slow enough for everybody to understand. I mean, it's just a, it's a cascading lick. Uh, But when you so you get a little kind of a chicken picking Danny Gatton esque kind of thing going on. Uh, so it's it's uh, just try to add all kinds of different styles uh, from country to jazz. Um, I look at most things in numbers. So like if you're doing uh, so like if we're in A. That'd be my one, this would be my two, minor two, which I'll always play, I kind of play like. So that's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flat. I like to go to the seven flat instead of the seven there, and then you resolve on your one. So if you're using, uh, if uh, so, if somebody says play a one three four five. You know, and you got your minor six. Seven flat. Two. Just like the little groove in the intro. So I look at everything kind of like numbers wise, like uh, uh, the Nashville number system. Uh, <clears throat> it's just easier to understand uh, to understand that way. Like like um, I, I learned that playing in church because they'll give you music, and then you you have to listen to it uh, to learn it, obviously. And and I can listen to a song that the church will give me and chart out the entire chord progression in numbers before I ever know what key the song is in. Because it doesn't matter, you can hear it. You can hear if it's a... You can hear every, every uh, note just based upon the... the um, in the scale degree. Like, because uh, all the number system is, is is one through seven resolve on eight, which is, would be one again. So it's just like do re mi fa so la ti do. It's the same concept. So um, uh, I can chart out an entire song in numbers, and then pick my guitar up and go, okay, here's where the one is. What's that? What's that note? Okay, A. So then I know, okay, the song is in A. So then you just write A at the top. You know, A is the one, and then based upon those numbers, you can read the entire song uh, without having any notation. Or anything, uh, there, there's there's uh, ways to chart it out and and know that okay, there's, you only hold this note for two beats, and it's split into a five that holds for two beats. Uh, there's ways to write it out that are uh, that work really well, and uh, I uh, I just always look at I look at stuff that way. Like I look at stuff in numbers more than theory or uh, or. Uh, you know, thinking about uh, I'm gonna play Mixolydian or I'm gonna play Dorian or I'm about to play a C sharp major seven add nine augmented into a diminished yada da, da. You know, I mean, I don't I don't really think about uh, playing stuff that way. I just kind of play what feels good and uh, just improv off of that. You know. So this would be a two five. One six progression, so it's kind of like blues. So if you were to do like a, so 
So there's space there. You play the lick. Play the chord, minor two. Play the chord. So you're just falling, you're just playing a lick to fall back into the chord. And pretty much the lick just fits in the space between the chords. So if you're counting, if you're counting one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four, you're just putting the lick in the space. Um, I mean, I just, like I said, I really just feel what I play. I, I'm not, I'm not like a big theory guy to where I, to where I even explain everything uh, correctly, you know, it's, it's more of just a feel and an, and an expression and just like, I've just come up with ways to express myself on my instrument, uh, without worrying so much about the theory side of it. Like, like, uh, there's six strings on this thing. And once you get familiar enough with the neck, um, and uh, a big part of it is being open-minded and listening to many different styles of music, because um, uh, that's how you're gonna. That's how you gain um, a catalog. That's how you gain a catalog of like. Uh, uh, sorry, of what to uh, build upon. You know you. you you can always come up with your own stuff, but when you really, when you hear something, or somebody else do something, or you hear inspiration in, in another song or another groove, it says, "Oh man, what can I? I could take that and do something with it, or I can, I can, uh, I feel that, and I can put that here and use that in this way," you know. So I think like just listening to as much music as possible and being open-minded uh, will will help build your licks catalog and and just help you know where you're able to go. Because it's all about, essentially it's all about what moves you and what moves the audience. Like if, if you're feeling it and, and it's moving you as a musician, then uh, most of the time the audience is gonna relate and be able to feel it too, you know? So I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, I just uh, I just feel it uh, just, based upon things that I've heard in my life.